Hi guys, welcome to a new video. So this week it's Adobe Max in LA. Uh, this is Adobe's main conference where they show off new apps they're releasing, updates to their current lineup of creative tools and just the future of the sort of creative industry and how technology is affecting that. So yesterday was their main keynote and so I watched that on the live stream which uh, I'll link to in the description below. And here are just some uh, points I took from that specifically in a sort of lettering typography area and what it means in terms of those new apps and those updates. So first of all, they showed an update to Photoshop CC for the desktop. And most of these tools aren't groundbreaking new tools, they're just tools that help speed up your process. So there was double clicking text, meant you could edit some text rather than having to select the text tool, select the text and then sometimes you'd end up creating a new text box or a new text layer. There was uh, this new subject aware selection. So they showed it off with a bear. So they clicked on the bear and it automatically selected the bear. So it uses its technology behind it to work out that you're trying to select that object. I don't know what this is gonna look like in practice when you've got a busy image, but uh, that looked quite, quite, quite good, save a lot of time. I do a lot of that when I'm maybe trying to select a person to put in front of some text I'm putting on a wall. There was live blend modes. So rather than selecting a blend mode, looking to see what it's like, having to select another one because that's not quite right, you can scroll through them and it will automatically show you what that blend mode looks like. So you can scroll through them all and then go to the one that looks the best. There was uh, constraint proportions is set as a default. So when you're resizing, maybe some lettering, resizing a box, rather than it, you having to hold down the shift key and do this now, it's automatically, as you click and drag, it will constrain those proportions. And this is something that I've seen in Infinity Photo for, Photo for ages, uh, where you have to press a different key if you want it manually. Um, so that's a really good one. Um, and the other one, which I don't know why it's taking so long to come to, uh, come to Photoshop. It's the being in Illustrator, it's being in InDesign, and that is Command Z, which is undo. If you press Command Z again, it just redoes the thing you've undone. But now you can press Command Z and go back and go back and go back rather than having to work out what the keyboard shortcut for multiple undoes is. So, um, as I said, that's just time saving um, bits they've had in there, but it's definitely going to increase improve my workflow. So next update they showed on stage was the update to Adobe Illustrator. There wasn't really many updates in this. The first one was being able to, if you've got, if you've got say you're doing a logo design, you've got an icon with it and you want to change, and that icon is an object, you can update that object and say you've got a multiple instances on your artboard, you can like maybe change the color and it will update all of those um, different instances on your artboard. So that was quite useful. Not that I've used it ever before and I would need to use it, but it's there anyway if you do logo design. But the second one was, um, I think it's called the, the free, for, free form gradient tool. So um, you obviously got basic gradients, linear gradients, uh, radio gradients, but this is like um, an easier version of the gradient mesh tool. So having multiple different gradients in an, a shape or in it. So you can um, add a new point, delete a point, um, change that color, that point, and it will interact with the other colors in that gradient. So you're not limited now to just as sort of this um, static sort of gradient that you can only tweak. Now you can have, um, and you can use a pen tool as well. So you can have like a curved gradient, which is really useful if you're trying to put a gradient on some type. Um, especially if you've got like an O or a C or something, and you want to uh, you know, do shadows or whether you want to uh, have some gradient type and you want to curve it, uh, I think this gives you a lot more flexibility that, and less of a headache than the mesh tool. So, so that was the update to Adobe Illustrator. So I'm looking forward to using that gradient, uh, freeform gradient tool. A few months ago, I went to hear Scott Belsky, who is the main, one of the main people at Adobe, speak about the future of design and they were mainly looking at AR, UX, UI, looking at Adobe XD and when we came to Q&A I asked him what was 
the priority, what was Adobe's priority for uh, apps on the iPad? And he spoke about the fact that they were building Adobe Photoshop from the ground up. It's not going to be a watered down version for the iPad. It was actually going to be Photoshop for the iPad. But um, it was taking a long time and they're working with Apple in, uh, to try and get the technology right. And this is something he mentioned on stage. And he said it's going to be coming out in 2019, which is very vague because that could be in like a couple of months time or it could be December 2019. Who knows? But um, they had a working demo which they showed uh, on stage. There is, you can touch the screen and that turns your brush from drawing brush to an erasing brush. That is quite useful because something I use a lot is the keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop. So I was worried about how that's gonna work, but I have to see that in practice. The lady on stage was using a brush and I saw a little bit of lag and that's what I'm worried about because I've used Photoshop on um, the Microsoft Surface, it, didn't, it was really laggy on that. I didn't have a very powerful one, but it was quite laggy. And I'm just worried that some of the more intensive brushes for Photoshop will, will lag really. And also, I wonder if they've made it, the brushes easier to use. I mean, easier to use, easier to make. Something I didn't notice is I couldn't see the pen tool. So I'm, I don't know whether it was hidden uh, on the toolbar in under something else. You had to click on it to, to select it. But I didn't, they didn't mention anything about it. Uh, I didn't see anything about it, about paths in terms of, you know, if you're drawing a path and wanted to vector shape, there wasn't anything about that. So I'm keen to find out, if anyone knows, let me know. But I'm keen to find out what, what it means for that in Photoshop. So that was Photoshop. Then they moved over to a thing called Project Gemini, which is also on the on the iPad. And Project Gemini is a app which is both vector and raster. So, uh, and which is very similar to Affinity Design. That is both raster and vector app. And um, they had the amazing Carl Webster, who does really good Photoshop brushes, go through it. And something I really liked was the watercolor brushes would blend together like an actual watercolor piece. So the water, depending on how much water it was in it, would um, seep into the other colors, would go around the paper really organically and it was really realistic. So I was quite impressed with that. And I also had some uh, oil paints which blended in together. So constantly uh, messing up the colors like you would if you were using the real paints. So that looked really impressive. Uh, and he drew using um, a vector brush, which automatically recognized you were using vector and created a new layer. And again, like I said in the sort of Photoshop for iPad, I didn't see the pen tool uh, icon and they didn't mention it. They said you can obviously open it up uh, on your desktop, but what I ideally not really looking for is the pen tool on the iPad. A day, um, a day, Affinity Designer has it uh, and is the best as yet. So it's something I use Affinity Designer, Procreate. Those two, two combined are two great apps and means I can do what I normally do on the desktop on the iPad. So I'm just wondering whether this is gonna be something that is gonna be on the desktop as well. So there's gonna be a Project Gemini. Is it gonna be something I can open up in Illustrator and edit on my desktop? or is it just based on the iPad? Uh, yeah, I've, st I've got so many questions about that, I just need to look more into that. Uh, I've signed up for more updates, so that'd be useful to see. But I'm really excited that they've actually finally announced that it's gonna, these apps are gonna be coming. Um, Apple was there at the conference talking about how uh, they're working in with Adobe to try and you know, increase the performance of their, of their tools, so like the iPad to accommodate for that. But it was all exciting. So, and if you know any more information, then do let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. Um, you know, at the moment, um, I think Affinity Designer is doing a really good job on on the iPad. Procreate is so easy to use, um, and I'm so used to working in that. Would jumping over to Photoshop be um, a good thing? I haven't really used the Adobe apps already on the iPad with Adobe Sketch and Adobe Draw. So I'm looking forward to the fact that I can seamlessly work between desktop and 
uh, my iPad. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Um, hope that's been useful to you guys, and um, I will see you in the next video.